This next guy's the Matthew McConaughey of Lexington, Kentucky. Make a whole lot of noise for Mr. Lee Kimbra! All right, I like that. Keep it going for chance, guys, huh? Yeah. Hot crowd. Y'all, anybody Uber here tonight? All right, hell yeah. <laughs> There's a drink on every table. How are we getting home? Y'all driving home with your fingers crossed. Everybody got gum, you know? <laughs> That's where the masks really come in handy, for real. <laughs> driving home with a little beer on your breath? Throw that mask on, dog. Cop comes up to your window, you're like, no, I'm gonna keep it on for my safety. <laughs> I'm all about safety. <laughs> real safe guy. <laughs> I don't drive anymore, <laughs> doing comedy. I used to be a teacher, and that's when I was rich. <laughs> Give you any idea of my current financial standing, you know? My favorite restaurant, Speedway, dude. It's a <laughs> public school teacher looks like Elon Musk compared to where I am right now. You know, and I am, I'm a broke boy, but I will acknowledge that it is a very, very privileged form of being broke, you know? Like, I pay all my own bills. I don't have a lot of money left over. But if I were to just financially ruin myself, bottom out, hit rock bottom, I would be forced to move back into the nicest house I've ever lived in. <laughs> hit a little close to home for some of you guys in here. <laughs> yeah, some of you got a 30-year-old cat sitter at home, or are you the 30-year-old cat sitter, you know? <laughs> Which one are you, man? It would suck to move back home, but you know, I'd be strutting in here just like, hardwood floors, a leather couch, I should have never left, holy shit. You guys have granola? Oh my God. Yeah, I love my parents. I got cool parents, I grew up in the South. I come home from a really hard day. My mom would be like, oh honey, don't worry about it. The sun don't shine on the same dog's ass every day. Yeah, second grade is hard, Mom. <laughs> really, really chilled me out there a lot. Thank you, Mother. And second grade was tough, you know? It's hard being a second grader. I had a mean, nasty bully in second grade. Corey. His name was Corey. He was a mean guy, you know? He just, I'm pretty sure he was conceived through anal sex. Like, I don't, just nothing, no love in the conception of that kid, you know? Just. Couple grunts in the dark, nine months later, here is the spawn of Satan. <laughs> Fucking Corey, man. Little butt baby, dude. Mean. <laughs> mean, dude. <laughs> and he was so mean to me, like, all constantly, you know? And it got to the point I came home and I asked my parents, I'm like, what do I do? I was a little Eddie Haskell, I didn't want to get in trouble. So they go, you gotta defend yourself, okay? So later that night, they came into my room and found me filling my backpack up with rocks. I was gonna get biblical on this son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, I shall cast the first stone, Corey. It's going down, man. So they made me empty up my satchel of stones. They were like, we were thinking more fists, you know? So then I go to school and we fight as much as two little second graders can fight and it's over, okay? now. Follow me on this, it gets a little heavy here, okay? Corey had, like myself and so many people I know and love, Corey had fallen into drugs pretty bad later on in life. Uh, pills and heroin, right? And he OD'd and went into a coma. He came out of the coma and got in the steps. If y'all know anything about the steps program, step number eight is making amends. So he hits me up on Facebook Messenger. He goes, hey man, yeah. He goes, hey man, he told me the situation and what was going on, and he goes, I have forgotten large parts of my life, but I remember making your life a living hell in second grade, and I wanted to apologize. And I messaged him as quickly as I could, and was like, brother, you are so forgiven. All my love to you, that is water under the bridge, you're gonna get through this, let me know if you need anything. And he messages back and goes, thank you, brother. Next time you're in town, we should get lunch. I messaged him back and said, go fuck yourself. 
no, nah, dude, you forgot a lot. I remember it all, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I hope nothing but the best for you, but we're not getting cheese sticks, dude. Uh, <laughs> In all seriousness though, me and Corey, uh, we maintained a dialogue this last summer. And it was great. I helped him through his recovery. He helped me through this scary last summer, you know, and, and we're still friends. But I couldn't help myself. A couple weeks ago, I hit him up on Facebook. Said, hey Corey, hope you're doing all right, brother. It's pretty crazy you almost got stoned to death two times. <laughs> And he was like, what? And then I blocked him. Hell yeah. I won. Thank you, guys. That's been my time. <laughs>